G'day, he's all going. This is Ian Harris from Australia here, ready for some more art action. Today, well, hang on, I'll just get kitted up. But today, we're going to do a nice, colourful, in acrylic Pikachu. Nice yellow Pikachu with some pink autumn leaves on a tree. Beautiful clouds. Okay, come over here. You can see I've sort of lined out where I want the clouds. I have a reference picture. There we go there. He's a, there's a reference picture. So I've just lined out for his clouds. A lot of this can be done freehand, okay? So come down to the palette here. I'll get my filbert brush. I'll make sure everything's a bit wet. Now I've wet the canvas. Okay, now this is gonna be my darker blue. It's in the... So we're gonna work out roughly where the darker blue is gonna go. So we'll put that in there. I better put some retarder because skies always need little bits of blending here and there. So I've got a bit of retarder in this paint as well, which will slow down the drying time. Okay, come back over to the canvas now there, young boy. Got my sun. So I'm, I'm just, there's my layout lines. They don't have to be nothing particular. We'll get close to them. Because I'm going to have, I'm going to have three tones of blue. I'm going to have a dark tone, a mid-tone colour, virtually copying the picture. So all this area that's tight, I'm using a smaller brush. Blend that like that. So we're going to come a, a tone lighter. Okay, this is going to be my next. Put the next tone in. Going off our reference picture, we've got an idea. Oh. We're going to get out a dry brush. Come over here. Come over here. You saw this before in the other battle painting I did. Just want to blend these if you like so it's not too cartoony. It's a bit of a cartoon image we're doing here. But you want a bit of realism in it. Just so as that looks blendable. Or blended, I mean. And see, I could see a few stroke marks in all this. So I might soften that up a bit as well. So I'm just getting it on with my filbert brush, any old willy-nilly way in that area. See, it's real easy. All right, come over here. We're just going to blend this white. I've cleaned my brush, dried it out as best I can. I'm just blending this into the blues there, mainly the edges. Can you see what's happening there? Is it picking that up there, Reese? Yeah. There we go, see? Just give it a bit of a... I'll wipe it as I go, because I don't want big clunks of white ruining what we're trying to achieve here. See, that retarder has allowed this to blend like this. All right, what I want to do, come down here on the palette here. I've got a bit of dioxone purple. Just to give this sky a bit more depth and clarity, I'm going to just put a bit in the V areas of the sky, like so. I will wipe my brush, keeping that paint on it, and I just want to blend this out into oblivion, just like so. This is just being fussy. You want to be fussy, go for it. It's your painting. All right, now, this deep purple that I put on to sink that back and to make that work, I want to put some highlights because this is a cloud in front of it. So I want to highlight that. Just highlight that, and if it needs bleeding, blending back in, do it. But if not, leave it finished by the brush. Just 
wipe your brush. Bleed this back into that medium blue. Wipe your brush. The best way to paint a cloud, I'll tell you people, is to think like a cloud. You think like a cloud, you can paint like a cloud. That's the best bit of advice you'll get for nothing all day. All right, we've, I'm finished with the clouds here till we get the trees and everything in front of it. So that's all the background done. We're gonna blow dry it. So come over here, because it's acrylic. Like I said, you've gotta blow dry it very well. So as we can put the other prints over there and it won't mud up this paint. You don't want the paint turning to mud. All right, I've got some burnt sienna and some raw sienna dark for the tree here. Just they're the two colors I want to use for the tree just to get some trunk color and then we'll go to um, the highlighting colors, okay? So if I roughly map it out with me paint so I know where I'm going. Somewhere up here, there's a bit of a branch there. I've put a rough layout of where I want the tree. Somewhere there. Be another branch. Now what, what I'll do, stay on the canvas, I'll wet me brush a bit. And I want to keep that line nice and sharp, like I've showed you on previous paintings when you doing the edge of a line. Twist your brush to keep it sharp. Okay, come in here on an angle there. See that blob? If you ever got that issue with your canvas, make sure you've got a clean finger or something. Come from the outside and just brush it in and she's all gone. If you try and paint that away, nine times out of 10, it's gonna go on the wrong side of the line. Okay, we've got the base color for them trees there. Now I'm just gonna use the lighter color now to give it some God, I'll just copy a bit of the reference picture there and follow it down like that, like so. Don't want this one too wet because this is the highlight. If anything, you want highlights dry, scratchy and chunked on there. Okay, and a bit down here. It's sort of got that cartoony aspect about it, so you don't have to be too... Too perfect. So what we're going to do is just leave that on my brush, pick up a bit of white somewhere on the, come down here on the palette. I've just picked up a bit of white and see how I've toned that down. Come back up onto the canvas there and see this is still all dotty and wet. We'll just go to maybe this side here. Just bleed that in a bit, tickle around, play with it. And it's just sort of got rid of that two dimensional. It doesn't matter if it blends, it doesn't have to be real dotty. See, if you, get, if you, if you feel it blending, let it blend. All right, we'll just blow dry this tree now, and then we'll go for our second layer, which would be the leaves over that tree. Alrighty okay. now, we're gonna put some beautiful pink leaves over here. Look at the here, look down on the palette board there. I've mixed up some white and just put the little bits of red in there. You go too much on it, you'll kill your color. Now I've got me reference picture here, so we'll virtually see where we want these leaves. I'm just using the filbert to make the shape of the leaves. Try not to think too much about your picture. Let it take care of itself. Because when you think of it, this is an autumn tree. Okay, so all this corner is virtually really covered in, but don't kill it too much. These leaves are behind there and all over this tree here. Now this is one tone of pink we're using, right? All right, we've got our first layer of pink leaves there now. So we come down on the on the palette here. Now I've got me pink here. We need to two tone it. So we'll get a little bit of red. We want this one a bit darker than what's already there. So if you see that there, that's a 
colour we're going for. If it's too dark, bring some of that back into it. Okay. And then we're going to come over here now. Make sure that's all in your brush. And then we'll sort of give this some perspective with other tones of pink. Scatter them through there. Come a bit over here. And then on top of this, we'll put the some little bits of um, white over these darker ones. <laughs> Not too much though, don't get carried away and kill it. Sometimes you get carried away and get in, I like that pattern I'm doing and you kill the damn thing. All right, now I'm just gonna quickly wipe that brush. Stay on the palette there. Get some white, good old clean white under me thing, under me filbert, and just highlight some of these in white, okay? Okay, these are like the petals of the tree leaves falling off so we better put them in there because I wasn't going to but then again I thought hang on a minute it's sort of the atmosphere that Pikachu would live in so we'll put those in just any old way you want to do them alrighty I'm gonna put a, sh a shrub here so don't want too much black I've got my brush I like doing, come down on the canvas here, I've got my brush I like doing shrubs in and to me it makes good shrubs, okay? You got your own favourite brush? Alright, and we're going to sort of put the shadow behind where our shrubs are going to go. That's See, I've done it really soft, it's hardly gone on there at the moment because I don't want to do too much of it. Bring it down there. Now I'll put that black on. But keeping the edge feathery broken and open, okay? It's a bit dry. Keeping that edge feathered and open. It's with this black paint. Look at all that black paint it uses and it does. Fuck all for me, look at that. Now we've done the black, I've dried that, so it's not gonna bleed in with this green. And this is gonna be the actual green that we want our shrubs to be. But leaving some of the black there, okay? That's it. I'll use my fan brush to get some. Get some distinct ones there okay I've got me shrubs outlined there now we determine what shrubs are where so we get my beautiful little shrub brush again and where you put this determines what shrub is where so can you come in here not too close but close enough see now I'm gonna leave a bit of space and bring maybe that in front of that If you see what's happening here, I've got to leave some of this dark green in there. Don't kill too much of that, Ian. And some... Stay on there. We just sort of made shrubs. Okay. Now, remember I told you with a little bit of white, I've come down here. I've just grabbed a little bit of white. Can you see that? And getting this, it's sort of making it a lemony, yellowy colour, okay? Just enough to highlight that. So come over here. That's not quite enough. You don't want this thick either. You want this sort of thin. You can practice somewhere if you want. See how that's got a big gluggy edge? Yeah, don't want that. You want a nice open edge. Because this is just a highlight. Come up here now. Softly. Those bits of yellow green we put on, we're just putting little hats on them. Just the littlest hats. Can you see?
Okay, now I'm getting the yellow green for here on my fan brush. And I'm just, the wetter this is, the better this grass will sharpen up. Okay. Just a teensy bit more water in there. Feel how you want your grass to lean. Now all that dark we put in there, don't kill it. Get some highlights without turning it into mud. Just enough to highlight it. Okay, now see here, we're gonna create our path. So I'm getting normal black. I'll start at the very bottom of this. And I'm gonna blend it into those trees there. Just don't make a straight line. Just see how I'm doing this. And also the um, raw sienna dark. So come over here. See where this path meets the trees or the shrubs in here? It's always interesting to leave a bit of black. It creates shadow underneath the shrub and the path. The rest of it can be coloured in like so. See, I want to leave some black against that grass there. Okay, then this is the base colour of my path. Okay, so we'll get this pretty much defined. Over here I've got me yellow oxide. Now I'll come over here. Don't want too much of this on there. I want to just sort of break that road up a bit. So carefully does it, leaving some of that raw sienna dark underneath. And it's going to give this footpath a bit of... Just get... There's a lot of paint on my fan brush at the moment, so what I'm going to do... To me, that's enough on there, but look how much I've got on there. I want to wipe that off. Actually, I'll even wash it. Okay, and it's damp from the wash. Now I want to scratch around. See what's happening here? Can you see? I've got two tones of path colour. Is it picking that up? Just very carefully. Come down here. What I mean by very carefully, can you come over here? Can you see I'm putting that white paint on my brush there? Okay, now very carefully if you want. You know like when you're highlighting water? Just get some, oh, not too much. Like that, I'm gonna wash the brush again. While I'm using my fan brush, it acts like a long sword. See that? And you just blend them. It's very subtle, but it's better than a poke in the eye for a blunt stick. All right, we're getting there. Now, if you come in here, I've penciled in the outline of Pikachu. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. So what I'm gonna do now is get the white on my filbert brush. Now, come in close here. I wanna work with the edges. So get these edges nice and sharp. Virtually gonna prime the area where he's going to be. And once this is done, I will do the inlines of his um, shape, like for his eyes and everything, and shade him in. See, there's that blob again. See, I'll bring it down off the top there. Alrighty, I've painted him white and I've put all these detail lines in. So now, here's obviously yellow and some light brown, so I'm gonna put in all the yellow. And this yellow is gonna make up the edge of his figure. Work on your edges first. 
and then you can come in and paint the inside areas. Like I said before in previous videos, you don't want those edges all feathered and broken. Got him all yellow. I've left the bits out that I want to do dark, so I'll start with the top of his ears and we'll get those darker points to his ears done. Okay, I'm getting my raw sienna dark just for the toning colours in his actual body, which is virtually all this part of the tail up to about there. So we're leaving his arm yellow, but finding that shadowed area down to the top of his foot to distinguish his foot, and it's all going to be this darker colour as well. So I'll get it in there roughly where I want it. All right, I'm just finishing off this little mouse figure thing here. I think he's a mouse, my son told me. My son Reese has his own gaming channel. It'll be in the subscriptions below. You can click on that if you're interested in looking at some of his work. Now I'm just getting the finishing all this off now, like just putting a little darker lines that this character needs to finish him off. I'll sign it. All right, that's finished. Little Pikachu, wherever he is in his field. Hope you like that video. I'm just going to sign it and she's ready to spray varnish. Goodbye, good luck and good on ya.